With the mission to seek out music and the performing arts across Atlantic Canada, our journey brings us right here to the city of Fredericton, New Brunswick for the Harvest Festival. Formerly known as the Harvest Jazz and Blues Festival, this was a hot spot for jazz and blues lovers in the 90s and early 2000s. Now, in an attempt to bring Maritimers closer together, the Harvest Festival has now reached out to all different types of genres, bringing everyone closer together so everyone has a genre of music that they love. My name is Jeff Richardson and I'm the general manager at Harvest Music Festival. I think Harvest is important to Fredericton you know, for a couple of reasons. Um, primarily, it's, it's acted to really expose Fredericton to all kinds of different different kinds of music, different genres in the beginning with jazz and blues and as we expanded over the years into world and pop and rock and Americana. It gives us a chance to to experience new music, to hear new artists and also to um, for local and regional musicians to to share the same stages with them. The other thing it does is it really works like Fredericton's homecoming. It's sort of harvest is the one time of year when um, you know, you, you may see people that you, you haven't seen in since the previous harvest and you get together and, and toast the new year, toast the fall, welcome students back and enjoy some great, great, great music, um, whether it is your audience member or, or as a volunteer helping to make the festival happen. I think it's really the, the people behind the festival who are always hungry to, to try new things, to push the limits, to bring in new artists, to, to sort of dream big and say, you know, who could, we, who could we put on a stage in the parking lot behind City Hall here in downtown Fredericton? Well, it can be a real roller coaster, to be, to be honest. I mean, there's, there's a new challenge every day. And then you, you just never know what you're going to run into, whether it's, um, you know, an act might cancel, you might have to find a new vendor for things. We're always looking for sponsorship and government grants as a nonprofit charity. So every day is a new adventure, but the, the exciting part of it is there's a team of uh, problem solvers who love to put on events who want to sort of do their best for the for the community here and offer a great great event every September. We're lucky to have support from all kinds of different organizations. I think we had 60 sponsors last year, most of whom are uh, local businesses who want to see Harvest happen every year, and many of whom have been here for, throughout Harvest's 31-year history. So they're really happy to, to support what we do and, and uh, make the festival a reality every year. And we also get a lot of support from our government partners at the municipal level, at the provincial level, and at the, at the federal level, all of whom uh, want to see music, live music and live arts uh, flourishing in, in our community for all kinds of good reasons. It takes somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 to 800 volunteers to put on Harvest every year um, and they're doing everything from you know welcoming people at admissions to working security to opening drinks at the bar and the like and um, so I would say that uh, you know in addition to the sponsors they're the folks who make the festival happen so be, be nice and th say thank you to a volunteer. With the goal of shedding light on creative minds here in the Maritimes, most of the performers here at Harvest are Atlantic Canadian based. And over a third come from right here in New Brunswick. Alright, so tell me your names. What are your names? I'm, I'm Rachel. I'm Alexis. Okay, so what are you doing here at the festival? We're here volunteering yeah, for the rugby, rugby team. team. Yeah. Still women's rugby. Yeah. So what's your experience been like so far? Tell me about it. It's so amazing. Yeah, the music's really good. Yeah, we've been dancing and singing. Yeah. Like, just helping out. Well, how, why, why do you think it's important to volunteer at events like Harvest? Just to make the events better and just to bring out the spirit because volunteers are always in a good mood. Yeah, to give a helping hand to the community.
Kate Rogers, the mayor of Fredericton. With Harvest in particular, I just see that festival, you know that festival started um, it's just a sort of small, locally grown, um, very grassroots kind of festival, which I feel is what makes it so special now, today. Many have volunteered over the years. Many were part of the creation and um, the growth of that festival. Frederick Tonians really feel like Harvest is theirs, right? And I feel that that has helped with helped Harvest grow. They've had a captive audience that has grown with them. And, uh, and I just imagine that continuing. I know that every year they have a very engaged board of directors and engaged staff that are really mindful that they're delivering a festival that's reflective of what it is that, that their audience wants. We have uh, French and English uh, performers, we have Indigenous performers, and we, they, and I think in all areas um, we're seeing a growth in, in all, there are more and more Indigenous performers, which is wonderful because it's exposing all of us to, uh, to forms of music that we aren't as familiar with, and increasingly as we get people moving into our parents bringing again different, more cultural backgrounds um, with more cultural expressions, that will even increase more so. So for me, for someone who's been an avid consumer of music really my whole life, um, I find it really exciting. So it's amazing what a harvest brings to the city from an economic uh, perspective. It's it, a huge economic impact. It is felt a lot by our downtown businesses because um, the festival takes place in the downtown on the south side. So a lot of those uh, businesses, there's you know there's so much activity. It's so vibrant down here, and the businesses get to take advantage of that. They run promotions. We have a BIA, which is a business improvement area. It's mm -hmm. called Downtown Fredericton Inc. and they do a lot to help with the promotion of the businesses during harvest, but a lot, you know, they do storefronts. There's always storefront competitions mm -hmm. and they have special sales and they have, uh, they extend hours often. So mm -hmm. it, um, so they sort of take care of themselves and they make sure that they're, mm -hmm. that, you know, they promote themselves, but Fredericton Tourism also works really, really closely with the business community and ensuring that we're promoting businesses. Oh, I love the Fredericton music scene. It's really, really supportive. So they're very, there's a lot of mutual support. Um, they, I think some of them even play in a variety of bands and things, but they go out for each other. There feels like there's a real pulse and the, the heart, there's a real heartbeat to it. Everyone is welcome mm. and everyone can find something, right? It would, it's the same, Harvest operates the same way, right? There is something for literally everyone, regardless of age, background, orientation. There's something for everyone, so it's really a, a place for the, for the community, a festival for the community. Running from September 13th to the 18th, Harvest is full of amazing acts like Blue Rodeo, The War on Drugs, The Sheepdogs, and so much more amazing talent. Everyone's sure to find something to their liking. All right, so we're here with Josh McGinley, who's one of the performers here at Harvest. Hi, Josh, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, man. 2011 was the first year. It's been uh, 11 years for me now. It's, there's a, just a special vibe here, I think. Uh, and I don't know if I could really pin, like, pinpoint what it is. It's just something about the way the, the people, the, the crowds at this festival, it makes musicians play differently, I think. Uh, it's so good for local economy and businesses. It's good for local artists, too, and musicians that are trying to make a go at this. And gives, uh, I think it gives local artists a chance to play on stages with some really big names that uh, otherwise they probably might not get the opportunity to do so. And I mean for me like I remember like first coming here uh, before playing it and just experiencing it. Grow up and start trying to do music as a living and, and to come out and be able to play it for 11 years it's, it really feels like special now so. Honestly just you know Given, given you the opportunity to play in front of large audiences, you know, and not even just on big stage, tent stages, but also in the bars, I mean, everything's thriving during Harvest, so, you know, it really opened a lot of doors for us in terms of playing from playing in Fredericton. I'm from St. John myself, and so we, you know, Harvest was kind of an entry point for us, and, and we were able to, you know, do a lot of shows with a lot of different bands over the years up here, but it, it, even though there's thousands, tens of thousands of people, it feel doesn't feel like, you know, you're at a place or you're you got lots of strangers around. It seems very comfortable vibe here, yeah. For sure. Well, listen, thank you so much for talking to me today. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, man. Really appreciate it. Wow.
Thank you. Well, we've uh, been playing Fredericton a long time, and uh, just over the years, the, the this we realized that it's some of the best crowds in in, uh, in Canada for sure. So, uh, Harvest is always just a fantastic time. Um, the crowds are always nuts, um, so we can kind of guarantee that it's going to be a fun show all the time. Uh, I don't know. Fredericton's kind of a it's a good music town, I think. It's always kind of had has been. I think just being an East Coast town. Um, I think we all celebrate music here a little more than the rest of Canada in some ways or another. There's, certain, there's a kind of different pride here uh, on a different level, I think. So just something in the water here that I think people really love music. And it's pretty special. Uh, I don't know what it was, what year it was uh, when I first played my first one, but and I remember it and it was just, I think it's my most memorable show because I was so surprised at how insane the crowd was and how it was like, sold out and it was just, it was really memorable. I didn't realize how awesome this festival was until I got to play it, really. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Matt, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today, and I wish you the best of luck tonight at, at your uh, show. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate it, man. It, Fredericton is usually pretty quiet throughout the summer. We even have other festivals that happen that, that usually get well attended, but there's something about this festival. It just draws in people from America and all across the country, and it, it, it becomes ridiculous. Like, you could never put a show on on Carlton Street any other day or night of the year where there's like three or 400 people watching you. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, they, they close off Queen Street, the whole length of it. It's what, like three or four blocks, five blocks, yeah. and there's people like shoulder to shoulder, 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 shoulder to the whole way, right? Where else are you going to find that? It's just exposed uh, <laughs> local musicians and local music fans so much music that we might not have heard otherwise. It seems to be like everybody's a big family. Like, People playing our band, they're playing Kylie's band, and people playing Kylie's band, they're playing the hypochondriacs. It's just, just actually, we're gonna have a hypochondriac playing with us all night tonight. That's just the way it works, right? Yeah. You definitely get the opportunity to play in front of like hundreds, if not thousands, really, who are down here that would never ever usually see a certain band. They just, this is the time they come out and then they talk to their friends, like, oh wow, we were at the Harvest Festival and we got to see this band. Like, they were great. And then next thing you know, they're music bands. And they're telling their friends, and we got new fans at it. Right? We're here on Queen Street here in downtown Fredericton. It's been blocked off for the festival. As you can see, there are tons of food trucks around. The atmosphere is great. Let's talk to some festival goers and see what their thoughts are on the festival and what, what, what the vibe is here. Uh, excuse me, are you, uh, are you uh, lined up to go see uh, Matt Mays? Yep, we are. Yeah, are you looking forward to it? Yeah, absolutely. The music, the, the arts community, the people, the spirit, the love. Uh, why, do you, why do you go to all these shows around? Because I love music and I'm retired and uh, what else am I going to do? <laughs> my week, my week is five, you know, it's five Saturdays and a Sunday. That's pretty much my week. This is a really good vibe. It's the best time to come, I think. I don't know. It's like really chill right now. It's the afternoon, you know. You're just like eating donuts, drinking a Pepsi. It's the best, man. It's just chill. I mean, you can check out the shows too, but I'm just enjoying the the market or whatever's going on. <laughs> Music in New Brunswick is so special because of a couple of reasons. First of all, roots. Um, we are tied to so many different cultures, our French heritage, our European heritage, our Irish Scottish heritage. And so we pull from all these different influences. And then also because we are limited to um, bigger centers, we tend to gather in kitchens and we and gather in living rooms and gather around campfires and a lot of the music sometimes happens organically and then turns into songwriting and then turns into jam sessions and then turns into collaboration and so we even though we may not have the benefits of being in a larger center we still find ways to come together and uh, and make music <laughs> who are you uh, who are you here to see tonight Matt Mays. Matt Mays and uh, Keith Hout and Hookers later. There's not, it doesn't see, it's not like a big city, you know, there's not events happening all the time. So to see such a nice event like Harvest happen, you know, it's once a year, but like it really brings everyone together and 
you know, I grew up in Farrington and Harvest is like one of those events. Like it doesn't happen every weekend, you know? And it's, I just think it's great. Music in New Brunswick is is so special because I believe it's, it's all encompassing. It talks about things that we're used to, um, whether it be four-wheeling or hunting or fishing, we can all, we can all relate to what they're talking about. And I find also that uh, music, especially in the Maritimes, it just makes you want to dance. It makes you want to party. It makes you want to feel like a big family. <laughs> because it gets the community out, you forget all your troubles, all your worries, you come out and see friends you haven't seen in a long time, and the music, of course, the music is totally awesome. Is everyone excited for the show? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you enjoying Harvest so far? Yes, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any like favorite memories so far that you'd like to share? Uh, I don't know, Larkin Poe was awesome. Who else was awesome? Tara Lightfoot was Tara amazing. Lightfoot. Oh. So, I hear word that you've been to Harvest every single year, is that true? Uh, yes. It is true. Los Lobos came, I was right up against the barrier at the front, and I had emailed them before the show saying, please, please, I know it's not one of your hits, but one, my favorite song is I Can't Understand, and they played it at the show, oh. and so that was great. Drive-by truckers, who I never thought in a million years I'd see, one of my favorite bands of all time, came here to Harvest. Uh, people come from all over the Maritimes to come to see these acts, and they're coming Coming to see the acts and that's wonderful. Something like this is the livelihood of both up and coming and longtime artists. They can't survive, they can't make a living and do what they do without this and I feel it's up to me to support those artists. I think because it's like in such a public place that like it's just easily accessible. People can just literally walk here from like anywhere downtown. Mm -hmm. My highlight is going to be Blue Rodeo tomorrow. Oh yeah. So oh yeah, excited. for sure. Who are you looking forward to most? The oh. record company. Yeah? Yeah. I hear it's going to be a good show. Is that true? Well, they have been in the past, so I'm sure they'll be good this year. Oh, okay. Hey, you guys enjoying Harvest so far? So good. Any like favorite memories? Um, Larkin. Larkin Poe was great. Uh, St. Paul and Broken Bones, they were great. That was cool. Did you see when he like jumped on the like, on the bleachers in the back and like well, in the no, crowd? In the front. I thought I was good. Uh, I think it's the best time of the year because the students come back for university and then everyone's going back to school and like everyone's just here. They're excited. They're ready. And it's just like there's a good hype in the city. That they shut down a whole street. Right. I think set up tents and parking lots. It's very bizarre. It's very inner city and it's fun. Oh yeah. We've got a great <laughs> uh, music scene here. Uh, it's very uh, loving. It's it's great. Everybody's super kind, and I think that's really a big part about what makes Fredericton music scene special. Well, I'm Mark Tani. I'm a journalist by trade, but I teach up at St. Thomas University. When I was here last night. It was great. It was like one of the best shows I've ever seen here, and I've seen a lot of good shows. But... Yeah. Were there any like specific highlights for you? Uh, well, I really like St. Paul and, and the Broken Bones. Like. Um, and I like uh, Celis too. Like they're both. Like I kind of heard about them both, but I didn't know exactly what to expect. And then you see the band, you go, "Oh, okay." Yeah. Like you know, I'm you're, a fan you're, now. You're, you're, yeah, yeah. you're, you're destroying it. Here at Harvest, music is inescapable in that there are so many performers not only on the stages but also everywhere downtown. I mean, they're truly what bring the magic to the festival and make downtown Fredericton come alive. Uh, my name is Pancho Libre, I'm from Mexico. So I came, I've been invited to do the festival. So uh, yeah, that's why. Uh, well, yes, pretty much 35 countries so far. Ah, oh, well, it's beautiful. I mean, uh, people are lovely. Ah, it's very cool because uh, you can touch all types of people working on the street, like a, like a busker. You know, many people they don't go to theaters, many people they don't go to do shows, to see shows. And so it's very cool for me to, to do what I do and to have the appreciation of the people. So it's really cool to, to share my art with the, 
with everybody. Actually, I've been a musician all my life, and I played uh, bigger, a lot bigger venues inside uh, uh, in different areas and different venues. But uh, about six years ago, uh, I asked if I could come up in the street just to be here with uh, with uh, all these people that are walking by, and, and it sort of became a tradition. And uh, it's community. And you know what? Sometimes when I sing. This, this is a beautiful thing because all kinds of people show up here from everywhere and all the bands from all around, actually the world now, I guess. Uh, but there's such an atmosphere, there's such a love in the air. And uh, every once in a while when I get excited I sing this old gospel song. Up above my head there's music in the air because that's exactly what it's all about here. There's music and it's, and it's love. Harvest is very lucky to have sponsors that help them out with putting on the show, putting on events and stages and such. So why don't we go talk to TD, who is one of the main sponsors of Harvest, and see why they chose to sponsor and support the arts here in Atlantic Canada. My name is Jen Ald, and I'm the Vice President of Branch Banking with TD in Atlantic Canada. Oh, it's absolutely incredible. Um, it is so great. The weather has cooperated, a little bit windy in Fredericton, but uh, that certainly hasn't stopped the excitement. And bringing folks together. The vibe here is energizing and uh, creates a real feeling of connection. It's awesome. So TD's been sponsoring Harvest since 2006, so we're a very committed presenting partner of the festival. Um, we think that it's great for the Fredericton community. Um, you know, just it, it, music really has a great way of bringing folks together. It connects them. It creates a feeling of confidence in communities. It really just gives everybody a common ground, so very important. I think for us, TD invests in music from coast to coast and you know I, I do our um, corporate uh, responsibility statement the ready commitment really believes in connecting communities and so for us we think there is no better way to bring people together together than through music we also understand that there's many established artists and there's many artists that are you know looking to be noticed they're working very hard to unite folks to share their art with people and we're really proud to invest in them and so I, I think you know Har uh, Harvest does a great job of that as well there's many international well-known established artists that are performing here and there's many up-and-coming East Coast talent so I think for me specifically although music is something we sponsor from coast to coast um, especially important on the East Coast because we have such incredible musical talent here Absolute uh, pleasure to work with this with this team of uh, over 500 volunteers that we have who have gotten together to welcome about 50,000 visitors and guests to the festival over the week. So it's a ton of work. Uh, we work year-round with a team of uh, full-time staff members, and then uh, we have a, a group of core volunteers who meet. Uh, literally, we'll meet right after this festival and start talking about next year. So we've been working on it almost for the full year to get ready for now. So we hear from artists who come across from across North America that. Uh, the community-based programming and support, and everything went from the volunteers to the local small businesses to our sponsors like TD uh, and other big sponsors who uh, contribute to make sure that we're able to put together a first-class event. That real community feel is what makes us uh, stand out, I think, amongst other festivals. Uh, over the years that I've volunteered, a lot of people who were uh, people I've met through a festival have become not just friends, but they do feel like family. And year in and year out, we feel like that's the, those are the people that we you know, work with, we lean on, and we, we have um, we have a you know, great experience together. And so, if it wasn't for those people, this wouldn't happen. And that's what I, that's what uh, I think is what keeps us coming back to is like you feel this immense amount of connection, but also satisfaction in putting on such a major event. What the community does for Harvest, Harvest does for the community, right? It brings it alive, uh, brings people together. Uh, we've uh, been so successful in attracting people from, like I said, across North America to, to Fredericton for this. And it uh, just really is such, a, such an experience for the community and from all those different aspects.
Well, the, the festival just gets better, better and better every year. I mean, I think I was at the first or second year of the festival and have been uh, to the festival many, many times since. It's internationally renowned now, which is amazing. And you know what? Musicians love it because they're treated so well. My brother was a performer here some years ago. He's a jazz musician. And uh, he was telling me how well the, all the musicians are treated from when they arrive to when they leave. Lots of energy, lots of sense of community as people meet old friends uh, and get together, particularly this year, you know, after uh, COVID has kind of damped down a bit and it's easier to be, in, be with people and it's, it's just great. It's a place where culture and community come together, where we celebrate uh, our culture of music, our culture of performance, and our sense of community. Uh, and, you know, we're not uh, individuals who are, who are islands in a sea of humanity. We are actually embedded in community. We're, we're part of community. And uh, when we're not part of community, we get sick. The healthier our community, the more vibrant our, our culture and the opportunities to, to, to be part of, to partake of our culture, our common cultures, uh, the better off we are. The wonderful thing about the festival is you can have a great time without even buying tickets if you don't have the money to uh, to get into shows that are, are uh, you know have an admission. There's so much going on you can take advantage of uh, without having to do that. So so it's a great uh, uh, leveler in that way. Everyone can enjoy harvest uh, even if you haven't uh, got the the dollars to do so this year. It's finally come to that time in the festival where we have to say goodbye as the events are coming to a close. Thank you so much for joining me today on Atlantic Spotlight and stay tuned for more adventures to come.